like you're a songwriter. And uh, tell me more about that journey for you. Like how has that always fit into like the modern reggae scene? I mean, like, has it been a challenge sometimes? To, Bro, like, you're trying write? to get me to talk. I can see it in your. I can see it in your eyes. Like, <laughs> well, I'm just curious. I mean, yo, what's the sugar, 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 What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sugar Shack Podcast. I'm here today with Brandon from Bumpin' Uglies in a live audience. Come on, everybody. Give it up. We just had a killer-ass session with Bumpin' Uglies. How do you feel? Uh, I feel good and exhausted. <laughs> You've been torn a lot, right? Oh, man. We've been getting it for four months, something like that, yeah. pretty, pretty consistently. Yeah. So tell me how that's been going for you, touring for four months straight. It's been good, man. I mean, it's it's like our trajectory has been like a kind of just a slow burn for a long time. Um, you know, it's it's like for the most part, every time we go back to a market, it gets a little bit better. So like that was kind of like the summer for us. You know, it was better than last summer. And then we dropped this new record um, mid September, and it really shit kind of like took a bit of an upswing. And we went back to a lot of these markets that we hadn't been to in a year, and it was like. Um, instead of being like a slight bump, it was like we were doing like double in um, a lot of these markets, which I, I like to think is because the record was received pretty well. Yeah. Um, and we've been playing a lot of those new songs, and it's just been super high energy crowds. Like it's just it's been very rewarding um, and fun and great and fucking exhausting. And this <laughs> is it. This is it. We're done now. As of to, as of right now, after this podcast, <laughs> this I'm podcast off the clock, baby. Signing off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said markets. Like, what do you mean when you say markets? Oh, uh, like cities, like, like, areas, like venues. Like hubs and venues. Yeah, and I mean, they, like, you know, when I'm talking to, like, my agent, we refer to markets as, like, it's just the, the name for the city. Like, right. Like, you know, like, there's different you. venues and different markets. So, like, St. Pete is a market, you know. Right, right. And Janice, that was a good show? That was a fun Janice, show? Janice was, like, the top five show of my life, for sure. Like, wow. it was, it was Really? Pretty, from pretty, last night was, like, a top oh, show I mean, for you? We played like it was kind of a very similar thing to Reggae Rise of Baltimore. It's like we played to bigger crowds and we've done big crowds before, but that was like a headlining show. There was a thousand mm -hmm. people there like yeah. singing the words. Like it was pretty powerful. Um, and it was, you know, I feel like we played really well and it was just all around a, a good thing. You know? Yeah, it's awesome. You've got a new album that you guys just put out recently, right? Yeah. Mid tell me more. Tell, tell me more about that. Uh, well, it's Mid Atlantic Dub. It's 13 songs. Um, I think... I, I think we've... We, so we've always been a kind of an eclectic band because we just do a lot of diff different stuff. Like, we all like a lot of different music. Um, and we've kind of always just had the philosophy that if we can do it... You know, like, as a songwriter, like, I like to write different types of songs. And, and you know, we, we try to pull them off. And I think we do a pretty good job of pulling them off. But, um, you know, a lot of the success that we've seen has come from the American reggae world. So, you know, people know us from Island Time, mm -hmm. for Island Time, and then we would put out a song like Rolls We Play, which is like one of my favorite songs we've ever done, but it sounds like an Incubus song. You know, it's just like totally out of left field. <laughs> and, it, you know, while I love it, it didn't, that song was one of our worst performing songs that we've ever put out, which is, you know, it just is what it is. But um, I started realizing um, the stuff that we did that was the best received was the catchy reggae stuff, like the W reggae stuff, and then the hip-hop kind of leaning stuff, and mm -hmm. then the ska stuff as well, because it's like... But really, it's just like the dancey stuff. Like, people can, like, party to and dance to and then right. throw down to. So, um, you know, like, we recorded all these songs. Like, we, like we, at this point, we still have another, like, 15 songs in the cooler that we're going to probably drop in 2023. But, like, what I wanted to do with this record was make a collection of songs that kind of leaned into what we were best received for which is like i said like the hip-hop leaning stuff and the catchy reggae stuff so so that's what we did with this it, it really has a lot of that sound and it's, it's just a good vibe like the way I'll, I'll describe it is um it's a record you can smoke a blunt to um <laughs> you know just put it on and let it, it go and it's just nice. <laughs> but so it's it's it, i feel like it's it's a very concentrated version of of something that we do well but it's not pandering at all it's like it's still very much like what we've done it's just uh, a specific a slice of it you know what i mean right and it, it was yeah it was, it was this, this just uh, honestly it was like a theory in my head i was like i think if we do this it's going to be received well and it was it's been received pretty fucking well which is yeah. which is cool so it, it was rewarding because i think um 
you know, we've been doing this for about 15 years and I think we really found kind of our lane in this world, mm-hmm. which, which is a good feeling. Now you had said that like, there's some other stuff that you've put out that hasn't been as well received. Like, do you wish sometimes that you could get out of that genre, out of that kind of like American reggae sound a little bit and it would be more received? There's definitely something to like, like the modern American reggae culture that doesn't like to veer too far out of that sound. That's one way to put it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, yeah, I, um, I, From I would, my experience, but I would, yeah, I mean, my, my biggest thing is like, I would, I don't ever want to like just make the same record or the same song over and over again. Like, I don't want to have the same sound. I want to do cool shit. I want to like evolve as a musician and as a, as a human, like I want to, as I grow as like a person, I'm going to write new stories. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. ever want to like try to write songs to sell songs. You know, like I want to make art. Right. You know, I want to like live and write my stories about my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I mean, I don't, and that, that's for me, that's kind of like what the song has always been. It's like the reggae stuff has always been kind of like if I have like a catchy idea for a party song that kind of like leans into there. But if I'm like feeling like really angsty or like, depressed you know like sometimes you want some distorted guitars and you mm. want to like burn some shit down you know yeah totally. um like the hip-hop kind of shit is like more for the like bravado kind of sounding stuff mm-hmm. and um I, i've just always thought like different stories deserve different sonic textures and yeah i mean to answer your question i love americana and like singer songwriter stuff and, and country stuff so like I, i'd say like at my core that's where all these songs come from is just like a singer songwriter kind of thing so like I personally, yeah, like, I've always really wanted to get into that world. And, like, I love doing the reggae stuff, and I love doing the hip-hop stuff, and I want to do that f- for as long as I live. I don't want to only do that, though. And it's, like, I don't have any intention of only doing that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to continue to m- make whatever kind of music I want to make. But at the same time, like, I'm, you know, this is what I do for a living, and I want to keep growing, and I want right. to evolve it. It's, you don't want to just shift gears so fast that... Yeah, well, I just want to be selective with, I just want to be smart with how we do stuff. So it's like we found the thing that works for us, it's going to help us grow. And it's like, it's it's a cool thing that we do well. So it's like, we're going to do that. But, I, you know, like doing all this other stuff too, we'll still do it. We're just going to be <clears throat> sneaky with how we release it. You know, maybe if it's just on Bandcamp, you know, maybe it's right. like, we'll put it out there. So because like the thing is, is, we have like such a great fan base, you know, they they're called Ugly's Nation and they, they love everything. that Like, Ugly's Nation loves everything we do. So it's like, yeah. we're going to put out all the weird shit for Ugly's Nation forever. Um, but, you know, lean into the stuff that's worked in this world that we're in to help help right. us grow. Yeah, you mentioned, like, you're a big Americana country fan. We were talking a little bit earlier about this, but we're both obsessed with Zach Bryan right now. Mm-hmm. But you're a big Sturgill Simpson fan too, right? I, I got but... Sturgill lyrics tattooed on my chest, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, did you hear this? Is Justin around here? Justin and I have been obsessed with Sturgill Simpson. And if you don't know who Sturgill Simpson is, you need to go home, get in your car, and listen to him. But, I mean, I don't know. It's not for everybody. Dude, but no, he's, he's I, probably one of the best songwriters. He uh, is, and he's, his whole ethos is, like, it's just, it's very uh, admirable. Um, like, I, I, do you know the story about him not um, getting nominated for the CMAs? Yeah, tell, tell them how badass this is. So, all right, well, Stur- okay, Sturgill's whole story was, like, St- Sturgill was working for a railroad out in Utah, um, and he was always writing these songs and, and just bouncing around, and his wife eventually encouraged him, and she was like, look, you're really good at this, baby. Like, you need to take your shot at this. And he was pushing 40 when he did this, but he quit his job, his career. They sold everything that they had, and they moved to Nashville, and he self-financed and his first record and self-released it and it did really well and it allowed him to have a career in music. So he's, since then, he's just, you know, Nashville, um, Nashville for all you reggae heads is Babylon in that world. Um, (laughs) And it's, there's very much like a a Nashville sound is what they call it in a machine and it's like, you work with these songwriters and these producers and da 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 and it's like, a lot of times, you know, the songwriters don't even get to perform their songs because they're not pretty or whatever. It's like they want to, they get these songs that are going to do well and then they give them to this good looking act so that they can sell them and shit. And Sturgill's just an honest to God songwriter and he invested himself and he won. So he's been able to live his life and, and have his career the way he wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, you know, he was blowing up and 
I, I think he's won some Grammys, right? At the very least, he's like he's charted he's won really, really two Grammys. Yeah, but the CMAs won't recognize the, the him. C, the CMA will not recognize him. He is not. He's living in the heart of Babylon once again. Um, but they just they pretend like he doesn't exist. exist. <laughs> and um, he's very spiteful, which I love because I'm he petty shows and up, spiteful. Right? One year he shows up to... He, what he does is like the CMAs, like he just put out this record that I think won a Grammy and then they wouldn't invite him to his shit. So he showed up to the, to the CMAs and was busking out front with just a sign that was like, fuck the CMAs. With, like, <laughs> with, with his Grammy in his guitar case. Yeah. Playing his music in the parking lot. It's so punk it's rock. pretty punk rock. It's yeah. so punk rock. And it's like... <laughs> yeah. And that's for me, like, right there, that's like, I don't care what your genre of music is, that's like the passion of rock and roll and rebellion. And that's like, that is what I want out of music, is yeah, like that. Totally. I, I don't care if you got a twang in your voice, I don't care. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't matter, man. Like, that's, that's good music to me. Yeah, and that's the same, like, Zach Bryan carries a similar Dude. spirit, kind of punk punk at heart. Shout out <laughs> to Irie Dan Dan Sheehan for turning me on to Zach Bryan and changing my whole life because this dude is like, consuming my life man he's so fucking cool and like such a good passionate songwriter um and it's so cool watching him blow up in real time and it's just like with also a very organic approach like um i think we were talking about this earlier but his whole story like he enlisted in the navy right out of high school and then he made his first few records with his like navy boys down at a right. station and just like self-released them and they're they're they're, they're doing great. And then yeah. he's like, he finished his enlistment in the last year, put a band together and went out. And it was just it like, just people were up. waiting for it. Yeah. And then he put out his first major label thing. And now he's like, been in the top Billboard 20 for the last like year it's or insane. something. It's just madness, dude. And it's like, you just, you, he's taken a huge win and you can just tell he's the real deal. And it's, yeah. it's really cool to see. Yeah. I think too, like you were saying, like what lies at a lot of these guys is like that, like, not compromising the art and the songwriter at heart that they are. You know what I mean? You yeah, mentioned that, like you're a songwriter. And uh, tell me more about that journey for you. Like how, has that always fit into like the modern reggae scene? I mean, like, has it been a challenge sometimes? To, Bro, like, you're trying write? to get me to talk shit. I can see it in your, I can see it in your eyes. Like, <laughs> well, I'm just curious. I mean, <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> There's no shit talking here. No shit talking. No uh, prodding. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I think I'm a pretty damn good songwriter. No one yeah. really gave a shit for a long time. Like, it I, is unique. Your songwriting for the scene is very unique. It's a, it's it's set apart for sure. I don't think anyone cares about songwriting mm -hmm. in the in the fucking it, for the majority. I don't think or there's very few people that really care about songwriting in in the thing. It's more about the show as opposed to the song. Like the formula, like kind of like building that formula for the genre that works. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like you find a formula. It's like, this is cool. This is making money. Okay, let's repeat this forever. And yeah. then someone else comes along and they, they blow up and they make money. It's like, oh, that's going to make money. Let's fucking repeat that for forever. Right. And it's like, I'm, money's very important. Like, we all need money to live. But like, I, dude, I, I was like this close to a degree in finance. Like, I could be making fucking like $150,000 a year probably like fucking re like figuring out people's mortgage if I cared about if money was all I cared about. Right. Like there's way easier ways to make money than being a musician. <laughs> like I infinitely every other way of making a living is easier to make money than being a musician. <laughs> so like what the fuck man? Like what if you're if you're doing this for a living it, it shouldn't be about the money. Like it needs to be about the money to an extent but like Right, right. At a certain point, you want it to make money so that you can, that can be a, your livelihood. Yes. You do what you love. But, but not know, at you the don't expense get in of the to art. Get rich, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. At the expense of the art. Yeah. But, and, and there's, dude, there's a bunch of different ways to, to skin a cat. I'm like very principled with it. Like, this is very much like my whole world. So it's like, yeah. I've just, I've, I've hold. There's certain parts about it that I hold on a, on a pedestal. And like, this, the, the integrity of the song and the, the passion behind the song is mm -hmm. like, paramount to me yeah yeah well it shows and it continues to show that you don't compromise and that that's awesome you some of like uh some of your more recent songs too on the album like we were talking earlier about wild girl mm -hmm. and just the story behind some of that but i know you've got a guitar but i'd love to hear you unpack a little bit more about that song and, and the process for for writing that so wild girls is funny because it's like this party anthem um and like I was okay, so I wrote it during COVID, 
my wife got pregnant with our second kid during COVID, and um, I was doing all these like backyard, like guerrilla house party kind of things, um, to, just to make make some scratch. You know what I mean? And like, but when she was pregnant, she became high risk, so I couldn't do inside gigs. So it was like winter of twenty twenty one, and I wasn't able to work, so I was just home. And I decided I was going to treat songwriting as work. So I like, I, wor- I wor- woke up every morning. I made a pot of coffee and I wrote a song for like a month. I wrote like twenty something songs in a month. And Wild Girls was um, unfortunately like a girl that I grew up with passed at, uh, during that month, and we got together for the funeral. And like it's some true, it's a true story about this group of girls that I knew when I when I was growing up. And the other girls were like. One of the girls, my, my girl Kate, that I've known since I was born, she was like, you need to write a song about us. Write a song about us, the girls. And I was like, baby, that's not how songwriting works, but, like, <laughs> I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and uh, I did, and then I, I came up with that hook, and I was like, oh, shit, like, this is... Yeah, what is it? Can you play the, the hook really yeah. quick? Yeah. I think we've got it set up. You played this for the session, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like... The party doesn't start till the wild girls show Pocket full of duchess, twisted up with the dro. Handle full of captain, baggy full of blow. It's about to turn up. If you know, then you know. So, like, I, dude, I, I haven't had a drink in three years. But when I was still drinking, I could not drink Captain Morgan ever. Like, since I was fucking 22. It's like one of those, like, blacklisted alcohols dude, for you. <laughs> yeah, well, because these girls were just, like, savages with that shit, man. And I just, my first... My first probably dozens, a dozen times throwing up off booze was off uh, Captain Morgan. Oh. Um, Anybody have any horror stories, Captain Morgan horror stories? I see people in the audience like, yes. Oh, yeah. Mine was Fireball. I have Fireball horror stories. Yeah. Jaeger horror stories. Oh, uh, yeah. And tequila horror stories, but we all have those. We, see, yeah. tequila's my shit, dude. Like, tequila yeah. and Jameson's was, was my shit. Yeah. When I was still drinking, for mm, sure. Jameson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't drink much anymore either. I I had one cocktail tonight from Steve. Come on, give it up for the Steve and Ethan, Chartreuse the bar, fucking killed it. Amazing drinks as always. But continue. You, we were talking about the story behind. You said that you hadn't had a drink in three years, but it was connected to that chorus. Oh no, that was just saying. No, I was talking more about Captain Morgan because. Oh bottom. yeah bottle full of captain baggy full of blow like that was how they rolled around they would just always have either like the captain morgan or the rickoloff i don't know if you know what rickoloff is but it's like the type of vodka that you get for ten dollars and it comes in a plastic plastic container and it's they're just fucking savages dude like just like the kind of savage you can only somebody in this group passed one of the friends up and you wrote this song because of that no so like yeah it was it was i was just kind of trying to like tell the story of what these girls were like Mm. at 19 you know and it's like it's 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 wild because like it it is like kind of like this hype ass song, but it's more of like a warning. It's not it's it, you know it's like romanticized, but it's like you can't live like that forever. It's right. like it doesn't end well. It's a well. period of time for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the song crushes, so like I mean it's cool and yeah. like <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. For me, yeah. but that's that's like dude, I, that's what I love about songwriting is like you can tell your truth and your story, and then like it lives out in the abyss forever and people yeah. take it differently and it they can r- interpret it it's like as soon as you put it out into the world it's open for interpretation and like a dozen different people can feel a, do- a dozen different things about the same song yeah which is beautiful yeah i mean that's i think that's all art i don't get like painting and uh, like physical art and shit but music makes me feel like very deeply so yeah i just i don't know i've always admired that what uh what are you guys up to now like what are you doing now you going home resting chilling yeah i think we're all gonna go home and shut off our phones for <laughs> three to four days um do y'all all live in the same area more or less or with, within about two hours of each other okay. like um tj lives in like um right outside of philly actually no tj's a, a city boy now he lives in philly oh, i gotta snap. get it correct um, uh do y'all take a break like you in and you're like yeah i mean we'll talk to you in a few months when, <laughs> no when, when we're when we're like off like we'll try to practice once a week you know but we're definitely gonna take some fucking time dude to like chill um i'm trying to write when i get home like i just want to get healthy like i've I've been having problems with my knee and i got a little more weight on me than i would like so i want to get back to like eating right and exercising Um, it's hard on the road right 
It is, gnarly. man. That's for me. That's the hardest part is like maintaining a decent diet. Like I, I eat like pretty well when I'm home. Bro, it's not much of a. There, there ain't a choice, dude. Like that's the, that's that's what. That's the life. Touring bro. is like you wake up in the morning and then you find a gas station. Yeah, but you, the 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 thing about vegan places is they don't sell gas. Yeah, right. Or it's if like you don't somewhere got a full tank, then you ain't fucking like you're not like gonna that. make it that far, you know? Yeah. So I mean, I've been having pop tarts. I've been having a lot of pop tarts. <laughs> you do what you gotta do, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> corn dogs. Corn dogs are life, dude. The glizzy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm tr- I just want to go home and like get my shit together, and then like really, I'm trying to. Like I, so I always used to write a lot when I was on the road back in the day, but we, um, over the last few years, like our just our whole production has kind of gotten a lot more. Like we started doing these VIP things, and like we have a, uh, we're very fortunate where we have like fans that like follow around and like mm-hmm. see multiple shows. So like, I you know we we change the setup every night, but like. Um, so it's just a lot, you know, I feel like yeah, from there's the mo- more now going yeah. on, right? From the moment I wake up, I feel like I'm thinking about something until the moment I go to sleep. So I just can't write on the road anymore. So like, but I'm always getting ideas, but like mm-hmm. the way I do it is like, I'll get an idea and I put it down in a note, in my notepad. Or if I get a riff, I like do a voice memo. But then when I have home, when I have time at home and I can get in that headspace of writing, you know, I can mm-hmm. kind of turn that muscle back on. So I'm excited to do that. Yeah. Awesome. That's sick, man. Uh, do we have any Questions from the audience? Q&A? Open up Q&A time? What's up? Not everybody all at once. What kind of Pop-Tarts? Oh. I'm glad you asked. Um, hard-hitting question. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry and uh, s'mores are my... Are my Ooh, and I, I'm a big fan of blueberry as well. I'm a strawberry, classic strawberry guy okay. all the way. Cinnamon sugar. All right. Cinnamon sugar, really? Mm. <laughs> I saw a hand go up in the back. Mm. Like one of my songs or a song that like touches me differently. Oh man. Um This is song Blueberry Hill by Fats Domino. Um it was like my dad, I lost my dad about a year and a half ago and he wasn't like really into music, but he that was like his favorite song. And I just remember, like, he would always sing it to us as, like, kids. And it was all—it was a story, of, for him, it was just about, like, he would always tell it about the girls he knew when he was a kid. He was like, I took him up to Blueberry Hill and da-da-da-da. And it was always just, like, this big laugh and shit, you know what I mean? And now I hear it. Yeah, yeah. And, but now I hear it, and it just makes me think of him. And it's like, I'm either sad or I'm just, like, reminiscent. And, um, it's, yeah, I mean, like, I, I had kid, my first kid, four years ago. So that's, like... Um, it's hard. It's hard to think of one off the top of my head like that, but I can't play it. And I, I, nah, I don't want to do Damn. it. Yeah. I um, I recently had one of the these instances happen, but it was like, did you ever listen to Brand New? Yeah, dude. Oh, dude, so Amaretta Lion. Come on, man. Dude, like going back to listen to Brand New lyrics sounds like a teenager singing this yeah. shit. Had no idea what they were talking about. So it's like dark, like. It's intense. Okay, so you just actually saved me on this question. Like, all right, I remember being like 14 and getting into Dashboard Confessional and like, and never being in love, but like wanting to be in love and (laughs) like wanting a broken heart. Someone hurt me. Like, please hurt me so I can feel these. And then like going through that and hearing these songs and like, that bitch. Like, you know, like, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's cringy going back to some of that now. Dude, Trying Dashboard to like listen aged well. To- Dashboard aged well, I think. You think it aged well? It aged really well. I still listen to Dashboard. I don't even fucking care. Man. I can't go. I don't know. There's a re- Maybe it's because like that part of my life, there's just too much. I don't want to go back. And yeah. Re- visit. <laughs> I actually, so like what happened was like, it was, that was like a, it was like a year or two ago we were playing in Richmond and I had recently like just gotten back into Dashboard 
And I convinced myself, I was like, this is awful for like a long time. And then I revisited it. I was like, no, this is great. Like this dude it is good. could write the shit out of I a mean, song. I mean, pour his heart and yeah. guts and soul out into the song for sure. But like I, so I started with Dashboard and I was like, I'm going to revisit all emo and give all of this shit a shot. <laughs> and I was driving home from Richmond. I started off with Yellow Card. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> and then like All American Rejects, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> Went down the list and it was pretty much all trash except for, uh, for Dashboard. The U's just all right still. But. Yeah. It, there's been a, an interesting, you know, like the research, the emo resurgence. Like for some people it's working well and it's cool. And then not so, I feel like, for others. like It's a recession, bro. There's a lot to be sad about. <laughs> it is a recession. <laughs> They're like, oh, I got to get back out there. <laughs> it can get a little gnarly for sure. But. I, th- I think it's all, it all comes back to Machine Gun Kelly, if I'm being honest. Like. I, like I really a do. Resurgence when he put that album Fuck out. Fuck yeah, whatever. dude. Yeah. And it's like I, I, I'll say it on the podcast. I think Machine Gun Kelly is trash, but like, um, <laughs> but that said, like, he's making guitars. Kudos, he's like, he's making guitars cool again. So that's cool. Like, yeah. thank you, Machine Gun Kelly, with your stupid pink guitar that you can't play. Like, that's, yeah. if, you, if you can help me, like, fucking make rock songs and make some money, that'd be <laughs> rad. Away but, from me, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Any other questions? Anybody else got anything? Damn. Oh, uh, dude, the shit we just did is fire. I can't wait for people to hear that. Like, it is fire. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's changed since you've been here? I mean, you've you you were here. What? How many years ago were you guys? Oh, uh, you guys clearly hired an architect. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> like, you got a fucking chef, dude. Are you kidding me? Like, uh, yeah, like chef a lot Greg, has changed. Give it up for Chef and Greg and Jerry. Greg and Jerry killing it. Hey, it's not easy coming up with something new. And I mean, really, since they've started doing it, there hasn't been a repeat uh, night. And I mean, they kill it every single session. So thank you guys so much for feeding us. Yeah, that's new. It used to just be some like chips and salsa Bro, I, or some I, shit I like that. I said it the last, uh, the last interview we did, but like literally, like I think we were one of the, we were here in like the first year that they were operating. Wow. And like none of this was here for starters. There was a fucking cooler with tiny Coors Lights, and then we played some fucking <laughs> reggae songs. This was all dirt, right? This is all gravel, and and we were happy to get them. Like we were happy for those Coors Lights. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you've been a you've been homies for with the Shack for a long time. I mean, what do you think as an outsider, as an artist, like what does Sugar Shack mean to you, dude? It's what you guys do is like the, just such an important and beautiful thing to growing. Um, to growing a, a scene, to growing bands. Like, I mean, I I think we've talked about this before, but just, like, the, the like, content, like, y'all create is, like, such an asset um, because it's so expensive, so expensive to make this kind of shit. And then the reach that you have, like, for helping people get it. I mean, you guys have, like, you know, like, you guys probably have, you guys definitely have more fans than a lot of the bands that come through here. So, like, you're turning your audience on to up-and-coming acts so that they can they can get discovered and they can they can yeah. segue that into their own careers and it's like that's how that's how you like grow a garden you know what i mean you guys are i feel like you guys are like the fertilizer to the the garden of our of <laughs> our yeah. shit i don't know where that i didn't we'll stick the landing there you get what i'm saying we'll be we'll, we'll do that for you <laughs> no, that's awesome well anything else you wanted to share dude before we wrap up um we got a new record out we're going to be hitting the west coast um in April, we're on tour forever, man. <laughs> Fucking independent as fuck. Come out to <laughs> see Bumpin' Uglies and buy a t-shirt. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining in. Thank you, podcast listeners, for checking it out. Make sure you like this, subscribe, share it, turn on your notifications. Am I missing anything? Follow us at Sugar Shack Sessions on Instagram. And that's a motherfucking wrap. Hell yeah. yeah. Sugar, 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 thank you guys so much. Until next time on Sugar Shack. Yeah. Carl, fire up that blunt. (laughs) (laughs) Smoke some weed. It's a wrap. I'm off the clock. (laughs) I did exactly what I was going to do.